to understand how life is, is that when we get involved in church, and I truly mean when we get involved in church, it's not enough, Melanie, that we come to church and sit on the pew. Amen. Uh, we look at church a lot of times as a place to come, but the church is more than just a place to come. The church is a place to come and get involved. Amen. Talk to me somebody. Amen. Imagine, if you will, being a part of a family, but you're not a participant in the family. Oh, so I, I, the topic I want to present to you tonight is how to be or how to stay effective in ministry. How to stay effective in ministry. And I told Jane, I said, I said, Gordon, come to me with about three aspects of what you think it requires to stay effective in ministry. Yeah. Now, there are some, some key things that I want you and I to think about when we're talking about staying effective. Number one, look at the word stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stay. Now, Gene, that means to stay put there, mm -hmm. to, to be unmovable. Yes. All right? Stay so, what the devil oftentimes does and will do is cause you and I to want to separate. Okay? The devil oftentimes wants us to do that. We're supposed to be a part of something, but then he wants to isolate us. He wants to pull us away. Come on, somebody. Yes. So the important thing is to stay put. Amen. All right? There will be days, amen, when you don't feel like staying put, but the best place to be found is where you're supposed to be. Now, notice Jesus says, he says, uh, you, you, as a pastor, I have to leave the 99 and go after the one. Now, why do I have to go chasing after the one? Because the one is going to need you right there. Amen. Because the one is isolated. That, that was the one that didn't stay where? Put. Didn't stay put. Amen. Amen. And, and then on top of that, Martin, the other aspect of this is effective. Okay, we have to stay what? Effective. Now, in order to stay effective, we got to stay connected. Amen. Talk to me somebody. In order to stay effective, you have to stay connected. Yes. Okay? And if you're going to be connected to something, you should be connected to something what? Good. Good. Amen. There's a lot of bad things you can connect to. Come on, somebody. Amen. But if you really want to stay put, then you got to be attached to something effective. Amen. Not defective. Hello. It's, it, it has to be effective. All right. Which means there should be something in us that is motivating us to become what? Better. Now imagine just going to a church and you're not becoming better. If you're not becoming better, you're becoming bitter. So you and I can sit in a church and we're so angry and mad because... We have to feel like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just coming. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want you to just come, but I need you to, I need you to get connected. Mm -hmm. This year, and I shared this with Andre earlier today. This year, we have to stress the importance of what unity. unity, and then we got to stretch in unity, and then we got to become strengthened in unity. Mm -hmm. All right. So number one, we have to stress the importance of being unified. Amen. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, imagine the devil coming at you and I because of division. Mm -hmm. That is not unity. Mm -hmm. All right? So we have to become strong together as we unify ourselves in the Lord's word. Mm -hmm. So, Gene, how do one become effective and stay effective in ministry? Well, a couple things. One, the scripture that came to mind was, um, or is, John 15. Let's go there. John 15, 5. All right. John 15, 5. Now, this is Jesus' teaching. Now, this is where he says, I am the true vine. And he says, my father is the husband. Okay. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. And, and, and that, says, that says that uh, Jesus is the vine, but Daddy, Abba, Father, He's the vine dresser. Exactly. 
In other words, the, the God the Father knows how to dress the vine. Amen. God the Father knows how to dress the vine. And he knows how to address the vine. Amen. Yes. Amen. Go ahead, Dora. And, and of course, we are the branches. So if we, if we stay connected, Amen. if we remain connected, to the vine, mm -hmm. see the light flows through the vine, <clears throat> to the Holy Spirit flows through the vine, Amen. to the branches, and then we bear fruit. <clears throat> so it's important for us to remain in the Word. Amen. Amen. It is important for us to rely on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because without the Holy Spirit, can't we do can't do anything. anything. Now, that's a good, that's a, go ahead. I, the, um, I, I thought about this the other day. I thought about this the other day. I grew up in California, and there's a lot of fruit trees out there. Mm -hmm. And one time, I was walking, and I picked the fruit. You know, it just, it was so beautiful. The leaves were so green, and the fruit was just so big. And I picked one, and it, it smelled good. It looked good. Yeah. And I peeled it back, and I took a bite, and it was the nastiest, bitterest <laughs> <laughs> orange. Yes. But it, and it was juicy, but it was bitter. And I didn't even eat it. Bitter. <laughs> now, I, I recognize that. Just use that. Recognize that. These are trees that are along these roads, but they're not intended to. No. These are trees uh, along the road, but yes. they're not being intended to. Yes. Yes. Think about what I'm saying. Yes. I mean, you can go there and you see all these beautiful fruit trees that are lining the road, but in order for a tree to bear good fruit, the trees have to be tended to. Yes. They have to be what? Watered properly. They have to be what? Fed. Fed. They have to be what? Pruned. They have to be what? Come on. There, there's a word I'm looking for. There's a word I'm looking for. Fertilized. <laughs> They have to be fertilized. Amen. See, Amen. there's a certain proper nutrient <laughs> measures that are given to trees at certain times of the year mm -hmm. in order for the sweetness inside to emerge in the fruit when it comes on the tree. Amen. So just because the fruit is formed doesn't mean it is better. Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, Dora. Um, I also, I, I was reading the Bible too, and I was like, you know, I didn't even know that I was like a real gardener like mm -hmm. that. You know, I was like, what? And what it said was that you were forbidden to eat the fruit for the first three years, to let the fruit fall to the ground so it would nourish the ground. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's deep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, like, and, and that it got the nutrients, but it was of the same source. So I don't know. I was like, mm. The source. The source. The source. The source. The source. The source. He is the source. Amen. You know, for whatever Amen. it is that we need, He is the source. Amen. The only one. Amen. True and living God. Amen. Amen. So I was looking at, looking in the Bible, and I said, okay, um, effective ministry. Well, so the first point, though, is we have to get what? Connected. We have to, we have to get connected. That's important. Amen. We have to remain connected. Mm -hmm. We have to rely on the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we go to, um, I think it's 1 Peter 5, humble, humble yourselves under the mighty hand, hand of God. So in, even in, in even I thought about that, and it takes me back to uh, Galatians 2.20, where we actually, I'm going to paraphrase, well, we can go to it. I am crucified in Christ. It is no longer I that live, that live but, but the life that, that I now live, live in the flesh. Amen. I live by the faith Amen. of the Son Amen. of God. Who loved me. Yes. So we said, okay, well, all right. So it means that I'm dead. Mm -hmm. I'm, dead. No <laughs> I'm dead. Now, when Gene rises up, there are issues, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. there are Come problems. On. Come on. <laughs> but to have that consciousness that 
I'm dead. So I have to rely on the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to keep that flesh at bay, dead. Mm -hmm. You know, just dead. <laughs> you. So that's, that's one, Galatians 2 and 20. And the other one is, um, when we go through, well, we're going to look at the Great Commission, we look at Acts 1 8, we go to Acts 2 1 through 4, where we have been empowered mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Mm -hmm. Or we look at Ephesians, where it says that the same power, the same Spirit that raised, that raised Christ from Amen. the dead resides, resides in us. So, that, so, so we are equipped. We are equipped to, to do what he has called the body to do. To do. It's a matter of walking in faith. Amen. The faith of Jesus Christ, because he's done it all. Mm. So we receive it mm. and move out. Okay. And we're not doing it alone. It's a body. Amen. You know, we're connected. Yes. It's a body. And we all have different functions. Right. So, which leads me to a minister's function. What is the minister's purpose? What is the minister? So, if we look at Mark 10, 45, it says that the Son of Man even did not come to be served, Amen. but to serve, but to serve, okay? He's a minister. If we look at Matthew 24, verses 36 on down, we'll see where he's saying, if you have fed the least of these, you, right, you have also fed me. If you have visited the sick or those in prison, or whatever you have done it unto me. So that makes who a minister? All of, all of us. All of us are ministers. So you know what your 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 duties are. Well, how do we get to remain or um, stay focused on what the duties are? If we go into um, first well, well, as, as you're going, let me say this, okay. because I, I, know, I know some people get a little nervous when you start calling them ministers. Okay. <laughs> so, some, some are ministers by calling, others are ministers by deeds. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Big difference, right? Yes, yes it is. Yes. See, by calling, you're actually empowered through the authority of God recognized by the authority of a shepherd in order to operate in the flock of God amongst the sheep. Now, as so those are ministers by calling. Ministers by deeds are us all ministering one to another. Yes. Because we're all supposed to be doing what? Living the Word of God. So we're all performing some aspect of ministering to one another. Bible says, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. It didn't say ministers by calling do that. Right. Uh -huh. It is a mandate to who? Uh -huh. Us all. So if we're to bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ, so it is ministering to one another by deed. But there are those of us who are ministers by calling. Right. So this is this what this becomes what? Our life to do. It becomes our life to do by the authority that is given to us to function as in the particular office of ministry. So there are ministers by call, but we're all ministers by deed. Amen. Amen. All right. Gotcha. Too much information. <laughs> So we know what a ministry is and that we, we, we have to be power. Now, what else do we need to do? We study the word, we need to meditate on the word, and the word meditate means to chew on it. You know, you gotta 
got to speak it out loud. You need to hear yourself um, mutter it, utter it. So How many of us take the time to spirit. meditate on God's word? So, so see, the question is, what is meditating? Mm -hmm. okay. So when we talk about meditating, I'm, I'm just going to use a word for a minute. I'm going to use one word. Lord. Mm -hmm. Use that one word. What does that mean? So you start thinking about it from the aspect of what the Bible says and from what you know within yourself. Lord. See, because there's the big L and then there's the little L. So when you start meditating upon something, you start focusing in on just the aspects of that thing that becomes your focus. You might, you might spend an hour focused on that one thing. Sometimes we meditate on something throughout the day. I'll put it to you like this, Ezra. Sometimes something is on your mind and you just can't get it off your mind. Sometimes something is just on your mind and you just can't get it off your mind. Why is that? You're meditating on it. It's just in your mind. This is why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Christ's mindset was always focusing on what the Father's pleasures were. He always thought about what pleased the Father. Always. There was not a moment that he was not doing the Father's will. It was all about the Father, Jane. Okay. So when we meditate, we put our mind on something but we can also meditate on bad things. Yes. Mm -hmm. We allow the enemy to also try to trap us in the meditation. So we're sitting here thinking about stuff, no I to use the word, thinking about stuff that's only causing you more stress, mm -hmm. struggle, and strain. Mm -hmm. And yet, God's command says to not think about those things. He says, if there be any, what? Virtue. Virtue. If there be any praise, if there be any joy, if there be any. So there was a list in Galatians for the things that we're supposed to be thinking about. But then the devil pulls us thinking about stuff in the flesh. Oh, he was a bad person last night. <laughs> you know you was bad. You shouldn't even think about going to church tonight. Yes. You know you messed up. Mm -hmm. And all you had to do was say, Lord, forgive me of my what? Sin. And that puts you back in right standing with God. Mm -hmm. Because if repentance wasn't afforded us, we wouldn't be walking in the enjoyment of God's word. Amen. Hello? Amen. Don't you know God had you in mind when he made sure that when you sinned, he had access to get back to him? Mm -hmm. He made a provision. He made, he, he made that provision for us to come back to him. But the devil said, you messed up. Mm -hmm. You messed up. And so you're meditating on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. As opposed to meditating on the goodness of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which brings you, which leads you to repentance. Okay. Um, I wanted to say for me, it was like, I repent, I would repent, and I would still feel condemned. To where I would talk to pastor, he was like, mm -hmm. did you ask for forgiveness? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, yeah. He said, then you're forgiven. And I was like, but those thoughts, and he said, tell those thoughts what it is. Yeah. And so I would say no, because yes. I had to realize that I didn't know where those thoughts were coming from. And I said, no, I have been forgiven. And I would just, you know, bring these thoughts under subjection. Amen. 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 That actually, because uh, just a couple days ago, I was looking up the word repentance. And just came mm -hmm. and kind of he was meditating on it. Yes, yeah, so, okay. <laughs> repentance means to change your, your mind. mind. So what you were doing is basically changing your mind to what God already said. Has already, been, mm -hmm. has already spoken. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Why, do we, why do we allow the enemy to keep us trapped? If you're going to, listen, if you're going to be effective in ministry, Jane, mm -hmm. <coughs> Connecting to God's word is essential. Amen. Yes. Okay? What often happens is that we come to church, we're not getting in God's word, mm -hmm. and yet we want something to change in us. Exactly. But where's your meditating on God's word? Mm -hmm. As opposed to you spending 
countless hours thinking about the wrong you did. Exactly. Amen. 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 Which, like you said, if it will cause you to think about being condemned, right. and your faith will not operate right. because, because of condemnation. And, in, and it's in Romans, I believe, Romans 8-1, yep. mm -hmm. 8-1, 8 <laughs> Yeah, so that had to be like a bedrock, even for me. Right. You know, I mean, I just wake up and like, oh, I do all of this and say, good gracious, and does it wear you down? Yeah. You know, it wears you down. Exactly. It's like, exactly. <laughs> so, well, he did. He paid. He paid the price. Right. He's done it all. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, but it, 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 what about me? Yeah, what about me? <laughs> he, he paid. He paid the yeah. price for everybody else except me. Except me, because I'm not. But you're part of the world, and it says he paid the price for the world. So for the world, yeah. 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 But, but, but that leads me to my people perish. For lack of knowledge. For lack of knowledge. Yes. And we do. Like, mm -hmm. people do. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. do. I don't know everything, but uh, what I do know is Ooh. it has helped me so much in growth. Yes. So I understand, like, oh, okay, so I do have some, okay. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yes. And, and, and the importance of assembling ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. I mean, we can assemble ourselves, but we want to assemble ourselves with, you know, some generals yeah. and some, you know, some cows and all of that. <laughs> right. But remember, remember to, listen, remember to that the nature of man has been unchanged for generations. Mm -hmm. That is, when we sin, we hide. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. When we sin, we disconnect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. You cannot be effective in ministry by disconnecting. Mm -hmm. Now I've said this, Gene, but I don't believe a lot. I don't believe a lot of people believe me. <laughs> but I'm an introvert by nature. Notice I said I'm an introvert by nature. I'm an extrovert by divine design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just as comfortable being away from folk, <laughs> but because of where God got me, I can't be away from folk. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I had to learn to get over my uncomfortableness <laughs> in order to do that which God has purpose in my life to do. That's true. Sin will always cause us to want to separate, disconnect, hide, and what? Isolate. And isolate. isolate. It always does. If there's any, if there's any God in us, when we sin, we hide, as if we can hide from God. And you can't. And you, no. you can't. You can't. But we, we believe though, Donna, that if I hide from you, then I'm hiding from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know when we were children. You know when we were children, we played. You can't see me. You can't see me. It ain't that you can't see me, it's I can't see you. Amen. Amen. Come on, <clears throat> Ministry has to be effective in the sense that you get over yourself. Mm -hmm. That's yes. so true. Yes. Okay. See, because you have to stay connected. Mm -hmm. Because I'm better together. Amen. I'm better alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me write that down because I got something. <laughs> she gonna post it on the Now, why, why, why did I say I'm bitter alone? Is because in my loneliness, yes, yes. the devil plants all types of thoughts in us about why we should not be around folk. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, he will come in and say, you know, if they really cared about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They would call you. <laughs> then when somebody call you, you get mad for the call. <laughs> I don't feel like talking. But at the same time, you're condemning them for not calling us. Hello, somebody. Yes, daughter. So when you were saying, so when you get alone and when you get lonely, so when you're talking about believers, and when that comes to a believer that they feel like they're alone, and it's a little deeper than the situation of thinking they're alone. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, so what is your foundation mm -hmm. in this life? 
what is your foundation in this life in Christ? Right. Mm -hmm. So they you know, where is that connect? It has to be. It's not just you in this life. Right. It's you in this life with Christ. Exactly. Right. In Him. So that yes. you know. So and I, you know, I heard what you're saying, and I, you know, I'm mm -hmm. there with you on it. But it's still, you know, it's not to me just. Well, you feel like you're alone, so that no. Nah, let, let's get to sister, brother, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. brother, sister. Right. Let's talk about this lone thing, this yeah. loneliness thing. Yeah. Yeah, which is so we can grow somewhere else because you're right, you know, they get mad at you because you don't call them, get mad. But it's not about you mm -hmm. and it's not about them. Right. And see, right. getting, I mean, it is about them, but it's not about them. Well, we're getting them. people. Go ahead. I get that from well, my and, mom. And, and, sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes that, that aloneness, that separation, that the isolation, because it is a focus on self. 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 So I'm like, okay, well, here's, here, here's the truth. Gee, sometimes you need to be alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but not lonely. Mm -hmm. I need to be. No, notice notice what you're saying. There are times when you need to be alone, but spending time with who? With God. With, God. with the Lord. Yes. 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 Amen. And that's the key. You see, you have to get along with the Lord. Right. The Lord Himself got along with Himself. Yes. Amen. Amen. Somebody missed that. So, right. The Lord Himself got along with Himself. Right. Okay. Right. And there was a reason for that. Exactly. He needed to what? Connect. And meditate. Yes. Yes. The yes. difference though, when you get lonely. It is now where you're not focused on the Lord. Amen. You're focused on you. Amen. And that's what the devil will, that's what he really attacks is when you start focusing on and having your pity party right. and thinking that no one cares. Even God himself must not care about you. Right. Because even in your prayer, you don't seem to be effective, mm -hmm. which is the nature of this. Right. Okay? We can't be effective when we get away from the Lord. We can't, Jane. We can't. We can't. No, I see the hand. Um, I wanted to. I wanted to read this. One. Okay, it's Psalm one thirty nine seven. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, there even there he sees. You are there. Now, no, now notice, notice he sees me there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in hell. I'm in hell. He sees me there. Okay. Now, notice it says, if, if, if I make my, my bed in the what? Mountains. Okay. In the heights. All right. There, there are mountains so high, it looks like you're up in the what? Heavens. Okay. It does. There are high mountains. Matter of fact, it's so high, even clouds are up there with you. Okay? But it doesn't mean you've escaped the view of God. You just seem to have hidden yourself from mankind. Amen? You become what we call a hermit. Notice, notice the prophet Elijah. What did he do? He went and did what? Hid himself. Where did he hide himself? In the caves. What was his, what was his complaint? God, you've abandoned me. I'm the only one left. <laughs> and the king is out to kill me. Right. You must don't care about me. And God had to have a conversation with Elijah. Get yourself down from here. I got others that you don't even know about. Amen. If you think you're the only one God has in reserve, then you're sadly mistaken. Yeah. Why? Because the enemy does that to us. Yeah. The enemy thinks, have us thinking that we're the only one. Now, I'm going to say that again. The enemy has us thinking that we're the only one. Amen. Nobody else going through what I'm going through. <laughs> Ain't what the Bible says, though. There's nothing, nothing. new. <laughs> There's nothing new. It's just a different generation. Amen. We're faced with the same stuff. I tell people, I said, all you got to do is change the name on the house address. The same stuff happened to that house address as happened to that house address. Hello, somebody. If it ain't happened, it will. <laughs> Just give it a moment. If it has happened at your house yet, it will. So when you think that it ain't happened to nobody but you, you're highly mistaken. Yes. If I may, kind of 
what Ezra pointed out as far as the song, the, the thing that just kind of jumped out at me is it says, if I go up to the mountains, mm -hmm. but then on the other side it says, if I make my bed, in other words, you set up shop in your misery, mm -hmm. I'm going to look at you. He can see you in the misery. Isn't that what Jonah did? Yeah. Jonah set up shop. Set up shop. And, and oh, guess, guess what he set up shop at? <laughs> what God provided him. When you don't see God's provision, even in your mess, mm -hmm. hello, then all you're doing is having a complaint with yourself and against yourself. But why do we do that? Why do we do that? Why, why did we get to the point of becoming ineffective? Well, we, we get to that point, we get to that place because... I walk away from it. Because... No question. If, if we look at Matthew 4 and 4, it says, But he answered, and this is Jesus, and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Not somebody else's mouth. That's right. Somebody else's mouth. Right. Not my mouth. Right. But what he said. Now, can I, can I talk about what that sounds like and what that looks like? Sure. Okay. So I come to you, friend, and rather than you giving me God's word, you give me your opinion. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to work. Well, it'll work, but it'll work you down the wrong path. It's if she. Very work for some people. <clears throat> does it? Depends on where they are. Exactly. Does it? I'm just saying, does it? Does it really work does for them really or against them? That's what I'm saying. I'm just work? asking, does it really work? It works. Does it work for them or does it work against yeah. them? Okay. That's all. Something is working. Yeah. Something is working. Mm -hmm. But is it going to have a positive outcome? Mm -hmm. so, That's the question. Yeah, exactly. Is it going to be a sustained outcome that is tied to a promise in God's word? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You see? See, God made clear promises. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you can take those to the what? Bank. Bank. No, you can take them to your life. <laughs> the, the bank might cheat you. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. But you can take these things because they are going to give us what? Life. Eternal. This is why that, that, that part B of John 10, 10 makes sense. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life mm -hmm. and that more what? Abundantly. But now, Gene, you give me your opinion. Well, I think you should just See? go that there's a problem, I think. <laughs> I think. You see how that sounds? Rather mm -hmm. than telling me what Jesus did when, Je when, when Satan attacked him in Luke's Gospel, the fourth chapter, the devil was saying one thing. Mm -hmm. What did the Lord himself say? But the word says. He sure did. He sure does. I thank you for your opinion. Yes, but what does God say concerning my situation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I've learned to listen. Mm -hmm. When people talk, mm -hmm. I've learned to separate what they think from what God has already said mm -hmm. concerning me. Amen. But that took spending time with him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That always, listen, that always requires you spending time in the Full time devil, <laughs> part time Christian. <laughs> I spend time with the devil Monday through Sunday. <laughs> That's not good, sir. Monday through. We know what you mean. We know. Well, I, you know what? Some of us do spend the time with the devil, Monday through Sunday. And he's enjoying our time spent. He does show up in church. If you don't think so, why would the Lord say let the wheat and tear grow together? God said, I'll do the separating. I know who's a sheep and I know who's a goat. I'll say to the sheep, come to my right side. And I'll say to the goat, stand on my left. Because I got a place reserved for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make sure that we stay effective. Yes. Connecting to God's word. 
keeps me effective. Exactly. When um, Paul was talking to Timothy, and you know, if we, we flip over the first and second Timothy. Let's go there. Let's look at the first letter he wrote to Timothy. The first one. She made a very careful point about Timothy having been brought up with this, right? Yes. If you if you read back up just a few verses mm -hmm. in that same chapter, look at look at uh, 2 Timothy 3. Mm -hmm. And look at the 14th verse. Paul tells Timothy, he says, I want you to continue in the things which you have learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom you have learned them. So it's always good to know who you get teachings from. Yes, absolutely. Hello, somebody. Yes. All teachings are not good teachings. Amen. So you have to you have to be assured of the teachings and be aware of who's teaching you. Amen. All right. Yes, sir. Look at that 15th verse. He says, "And that from a child, yes. you have known the what oh, holy yes. scriptures, which are able to make you wise mm -hmm. unto what oh, salvation." Yes. Through the faith you have, which is in Christ Jesus. So you see that Paul was, was, was telling Timothy, you have walked in this. You have been taught this. From a little child, you have been taught this. <coughs> Sometimes we think that it has everything to do with age, and it really doesn't. It's when you were introduced to it, and are you continuing in it. There are some people who don't come to the Lord until later on in their life. Hello. One of our former deacons who were here, uh, Deacon Mel Maddox, I, 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 I never forget it. And he said this to me. He said, Pastor, he said, I wish to God that I had came to the Lord when I was younger. Yes. And I said, son, thank God that you came to the Lord. Amen. I, I know we sometimes think that if we had came to the Lord when we were younger, we could have done more for the Lord. God redeems the time. Ah. So it does not matter when you come to him, as long as you come to him, because you're going to be right where you need to be. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yes. Amen. Now, it was commendable, Andre, yes. Laura, that he said that. And I understood his heart. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to make him, I didn't want him to feel discouraged because of how late he started. Now, many of us remember the story about the king who hired laborers. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave that parable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He said he hired some where? In the morning. Early in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
He had some later on in the morning. He had some at noonday. He had some later in the afternoon. And he did have some way at night. And they got all paid the same. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't get jealous if I come late. <laughs> Just be glad I can. Because the king has the right to do what? Amen. Pay you for the what? The service rendered. And it is not up to you to determine whether I get in or not. Amen. It's up to the king. If it was up to you, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's another class. That's another class, Darius. That's another class. I'm a, that's for another class. Amen. Amen. So, um, First Timothy four, let's see verse twelve. First Timothy four, verse twelve. Let no man despise your youth. That's the one. First Timothy four. Did I say that? You said twelve. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yes. Uh, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, faith in period. Till I come. Give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. 14. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. That is in you. Which is given to you by prophecy with the land on of the hands of the eldership. Well, in the first, the first chapter, you see that it was his mother and grandmother. Okay, that did that. It was they put it in him. So you could you can do it. So you can do what? You can do what? Yeah, you said you said his mother and his grandmother laid his hands on him and kind of like you know you know no mm -hmm. like and, and put it in him like. You can do that. They brought him up in the world. They brought him up in the world. But it says it's about the gift. It said that. What did it say? Read what you're. She's talking 14. Yeah, 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which has given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of hands, with the laying on of hands. Of the presbytery. Right. Yeah. Now those are the elders. Those are, those are other those are other leaders uh, in the in the church, and those are the ones that the word of God has been spoken to and through. Okay. So it's just like here. I have ministers and deacons. They're considered the presbytery of New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because these are the ones who have been given the spiritual oversight, entrusted with the word of God to teach the word of God and live the word of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so uh, there were two of them, Titus and Timothy. Titus was a little older, if you will, than Timothy, and so Paul was reminding Timothy. He said that that which was given to you, that was entrusted to you through the land of hand, because that's what we do. Once a person announces their calling and then become ordained in their calling, we we acknowledge that that they have been what entrusted with the word of God through the land of hands. That's why you see the elders of a church do the, do the land of hands. Because we're saying we confirm, we agree in the spirit of God that this person has the ability and attributes to do what God's word have called them to do. Mm -hmm. Yes? So you could do that as a child, like, because I remember when I was younger, they did that to me when I was younger, and I, it just came to me now, like, and I didn't even understand it. And when you said that, um, I remember they had sat me down and there was the elders in the council of the church, and they did that to me. Mm -hmm. Like now, what did, 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 were they were they pronouncing a blessing on you, mm -mm. or what were they doing? They're, were they just praying over you, or did they say what what was it that they said? They were saying about some. Um, it was it was I guess kind of prophesying over me. It was weird because like I remember they're talking about. Um, being great in God one day, and that's why I told you, like, they told me that since I was little, you know, and 
And so I was just like, all right, but I don't know, it was weird. And they told me that it's not the, weird. Same, the same thing that um, that was given to my dad would be passed down to me a hundredfold or something like that. And I was like, all right, but I was like six, so I didn't, like, all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> So, so, so now that you remember that, yeah. where are you at in that? Don't answer that. No, I'm just don't answer that. Because there's a lot of times people pray over us and say things concerning us. I, I know I was told as a small child and heard it, brother. That boy gonna be a preacher one day. Now I heard that. Uh, not me. <laughs> they got the wrong one. Matter of fact, I was a little fire starter. Yeah. No. I almost burned the house down. You know, there was a little, there was, there's a little devilishness in me that like, it goes against every aspect of a good child. Right? <laughs> but now I look at that today from the perspective of who I am and looking back. So somebody saw something in me and nurtured something in me. And I become the manifestation of an inspiration that was in me that I didn't even know was in me. Right. So that's why I say people can remember your past, but they do not know your destiny. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who remember me when I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's a lot of people who know you yeah. from your past. But look at you now. Amen. So the question is, have you continued towards the destiny mm -hmm. or are you still living in the past? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing mm -hmm. worth having in the Lord. Yep. I know that because in Matthew's Gospel, James, the fifth mm -hmm. chapter, he tells me, he said, Happy are those who are persecuted for righteousness and sake. For they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And they're going to prosecute you, persecute you too. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. I'm just saying they're going to do it. But see, happy are you when they say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. This is why the scripture says, when Paul teaches, he said, rejoice in the Lord always and again. We have to stay effective in ministry. We have to stay effective and not become defective. We have to become better and don't allow ourselves to become bitter. Don't you know you have something worth sharing? Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Gene, we have something worth sharing. Yes. And if you're not excited about what you have, then you don't have nothing worth sharing. Yes. Keep it to yourself. Exactly. But what I got, I want to share it. <laughs> I messed her up. Yeah, that's okay. Way off track. <laughs> She would have expected that. We have something to share, and sometimes I said, okay, now I'm going to break a mission. You know, there's more places in the Bible, and you know, yeah, yeah, God said, he, you know, Jesus, I, lo, I am with you always, always. Always. Yeah, and I had to look up that word, all. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of slow. <laughs> so, so, so we had me to do a word study on all. It means all. All means all. Um, you sure? Yes. Yeah, all. You so, come to the conclusion it does mean all. Now. It, it does mean all. So it means what it exactly says. It means all. all. You know, and and he says, mm, because it is not my desire come on. that none, none. should perish. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, Lord, you know, you, you know, I need that spirit of, 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 of compassion, that, that spirit, that, okay, that spirit of love, mm -hmm. because I don't want anybody 
to the salt. And I want folk calling my name when they, you know, asking me for some water. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were hard, man, Lois. I didn't share nothing but no very bad. I carried it, I kept it to myself. Selfish. Ooh, Jesus. Come on, baby. Selfish. You know the best thing I've done. I don't want to be that dude that, that asks me. I don't want to be that dude that asks me. Can you send somebody? So I believe in a wordly sense, from how we have come to this conclusion then, is that we can't just be Bible quoters, mm. Mm -mm. but we have to be Bible livers. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 See, this is why the scripture says even the devil knows the scripture. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and oh, by the way, it says, and even he has his ministers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scripture says, and there are false prophets that have already went out into the yes. world. Yes. Then it also says, even the Antichrist has already gone out. Yes. Yes. So everything that we sit here thinking that is out there is in here. Amen. Because it'll walk right through the door. Amen. It will try to quote scripture to you. Yes. And if you don't know the word for yourself, it'll have you doubting what you know. Yes. Tell the enemy, shut up. Shut it down. You don't have nothing to say. You don't have nothing to say. Not in this. But the word of God. Which is able to do what? Free us. So, so Colossians, Colossians 1.27 it says the hope Mm. Come on. It's in, you. in you. In me. In you. So, so I have to say, look, I may have to say it and say it and say it. And say it, say it some more. Meditate. Uh, uh, I got to say, it, say it, it and say it some more. That's the truth. Amen. And in Colossians 2, 2, because it says, um, let the word of God dwell in you. God bless you. And, I, and it's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and sometimes I can, I can watch television. You know what that is, right? I can't lay my head on the Bible. Oh. <laughs> and get it. And get it. <laughs> no, I have to put my eyes on it. Receive it into my Amen. spirit. Amen. Meditate upon his word. Yes. And let it take hold. <laughs> David said, thy word, O oh Lord, <laughs> have I hid in my heart. I might not sit against it. Mm -hmm. You see, and you can't really get this by sleeping on it. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people who say, I want to get this, Lord. I'm going to sleep on your word. And so they go to bed with, with the Bible under their pillow. It won't, it won't come up through that pillow. <laughs> and, and you do exactly what the devil wants you to do. Yes. Sleep on his word. Yes. Ooh. Oh, yes. oh, man. So, <laughs> you got to find I'm about to say, I buy that one. <laughs> hey, 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 and I'm in here well. Oh, God, I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. Open the Bible. I said, yeah. you know what? I'm going to have to read this Bible in the shower, standing up with the water. <laughs> 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 Now, now let me share this with you. 
this one because, because I, this is a good teaching. This is a good teaching. Remember that Jesus took his disciples into the garden with him. Mm -hmm. yes. And he, he, he dropped several of them off at the outer edge of the garden. He took Peter, James, and John further. And then he told them, I want you all to stay here while I go yonder and pray. He said, watch with me yes. and pray that, the, that you do not fall into what? The condemnation of the enemy. So he told them what to do. But, and so he said, I'm going over there. And he went there and he did not go to sleep. Jesus was praying mm -hmm. to the Father. Mm -hmm. He comes back and finds Peter, James, and John. He don't go to the other one. He stops at Peter, James, and John. Because I figured if they didn't went to sleep, hmm. <laughs> you can imagine what the other ones are doing. Right. They went to sleep. <laughs> and he wakes them up. He says, what are you doing? Wake up. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't really mean to go to sleep. He said, the enemy is, a, the enemy is about. And he, he walks back, falls down again, and prays to the Father. He does that three times, the Bible says. And each time he comes back, he finds them. The last time he comes, Robert, he says, he says, go ahead, go ahead, just stay asleep. He said, the spirit is willing, yes. but the flesh is weak. Yes. Now, he told them to what? Watch. Watch. And I'll tell you like this. A watcher never sits down and never lays down. Mm -hmm. Because you know your body. If you have been doing anything yeah. all day, the tendency is if you sit down long enough, you'll get drowsy. And if you lay down completely, you go to sleep. <laughs> A watcher, though, Melissa, will stand guard, will stand the watch. Amen. Because when you're standing the watch, and you're doing what a watcher does, and that is you're doing a patrol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're on patrol, if you're on guard duty, yeah. then you're not going to be sleeping. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You're going to do what is required of your watch. Yes. Right. This is a good watch, amen. Mm -hmm. When the work while it is yet called, okay. but when night comes, okay. you're going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, well, amen, amen. There's, a, there's an appointment unto man. Yes. It, is, it, it is appointed unto man once to die. But after that, the judgment. So you have an appointment. We all have an appointment. That's what the night is. While this day, I still have life in me. I have light in my eyes. I have a mind to, to serve God. But Gene is about effectiveness in ministry. Amen. Effectiveness, meaning Produce results. Not me. Mm. Results, results. Results. Hallelujah. Good results. Amen. Not me. I'm not producing them. <laughs> I'm the best of three. Three. Amen. And there has to be preparation. Mm. There has to be preparation. Amen. There has to be spiritual preparation. Amen. You know, there's this holiness, the cleanliness. Jesus Christ, we are in him. He is all of that. Mm. Mm. But if I'm not careful, I will forget that I'm in him. Mm. Mm. Or I will think that I can do, I have without a license. Mm. 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 That I can do without I can do without him. And I can frustrate his grace. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning that Look, he's done it all. He's not giving me a license to do anything that I want to do. Say, oh, he's done it all. He's, he's forgiven me. What is that word? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But thank God, he, you know, he's gracious. Amen. Yes, like he knew. He's gracious. Yes. He's gracious. Mm -hmm. Towards us. Towards mm -hmm. us. Because, see, I can't do it. Yeah. By myself. By myself. I got to do it yeah. in him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to do him. Yes. I wanted to say that there were times when <clears throat> my flesh was just mm -hmm. so, I'm just so. took over and I did mess up. Out I'm of control. control. And, 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 I, and I messed up. <laughs> and girl. even though nobody see me, <laughs> I knew that God see me. And I was like, God, I'm so sorry. But it was almost like God was so great. And like when he spoke back to me, mm -hmm. it was so gracious. Like I already knew what you was about to do. <laughs> you know, I already knew what you were going to do. And it, it kind of made me cry because it's like, mm -hmm. and it makes me want to be better. It makes mm -hmm. me want to do better because 
his love. Like, and I've said it from the very get go. What changed my life was the love. You received it, right? And I said, God, I need help. Like, I already knew what she was gonna do to Andrew. <laughs> he already knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God's good. God's awesome. And, and he, he, he chose us. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yes. A mess. A mess. A mess. But he, he uh, so he's, he's, he, we're the canvas. Mm. So he's, you know, he's putting a little white right here and a little black right here, or maybe you clear that up, put some yellow, you know, we can mess up. So he said he's completing the canvas mm. because we are. His workmanship, we yes. are get his. Out. Get out. He's, he's get out. the artist. Stand down. You know, <laughs> he's the master artist, you know? Whether he's using water, acrylic, mm. oil, mm. pencil, chalk, it doesn't matter. It's you know? all going to come out of you. Yes, Lord. Yep. Oil takes a little longer to dry. Now, I have, I have a question <laughs> for you. I have a question for you. How many of us was a mess? Well, see, this mess became a messenger Amen. Amen. that has a message, yes. and it's from him. Amen. Notice that you can't spell Amen. message without mess. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. And you became a messenger without mess. <laughs> I became a messenger because of the message Amen. that I heard, this, yes. that this mess heard. And now I can, I can say what his word says. I was an M-E-S-S. Yes. Melissa, I was an M-E-S-S. By all accounts, I was a big M-E-S-S. <laughs> but I've become the biggest fan of the Lord. Amen. Because the big mess became a big messenger. Amen. And I believe, now, I, man, I, matter of fact, I know what he gave me was greater than what I was. Oh, yes. What he gave me was greater than what I was. And that's what we got to remind ourselves. Yes. Though I was a mess now, hmm. I'm willing to become your messenger. And I'm willing to take your message to the world. Yes. Isn't that what he said in Matthew 28? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go into all the world. Mm-hmm. Preach the message mm-hmm. to every preacher. Yeah. I'm not going to discriminate against who gets it. I'm just going to get it. It's up to you to receive it, but you have to be a messenger, Amen. and your life is the message itself, yes. because he took a dark thing and turned it into a light, mm-hmm. that you're no longer walking in darkness, mm-hmm. but you're walking in his light. Amen. The Bible said, he is the light. Mm-hmm. He's the light of men. Mm-hmm. He lighted my path. He's a lamp unto your feet, yes. my feet. I've learned to trust him. Gene, it's about being effective. It's about being effective. I love this. Amen. It's about being effective. You know we're over our time. Oh. Okay. Well, we got to do a part two. Part two? <laughs> yeah. Part two. Part two. I will be mindful of time, but you got to do a part two. Did this help you in the Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I told Gene, I said, I want to, I want to, I want to teach with you. <laughs> Amen. I love the, I love the, the play between us because you learn, you learn things about what God is doing. Amen. 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 She really didn't know I was going to do what I did. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> but we're better together. Amen. <laughs> Can I just say that? Yes. We're better together. Amen. And, and you'll, you'll see more teamwork taking place between teachers. Amen. I, I, love, to, I love to see teamwork amongst Amen. teachers. Amen. Partner is stronger with the weaker. She's stronger than I am. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that pinch is dropping. That pinch is dropping. She was standing up.